Bread making is one of those things that can either seem like it takes a lot of work or sometimes you find recipes that are super easy. This is a super easy dilly bread. It's one my mom made every so often growing up, especially on a week where she just wanted to have a bread with a meal and didn't go and start it in the morning or want to take all day. This was that quick go-to dilly bread, but it has yeast, so it has the good flavor. It actually rises. Your hands-on time is just a little bit less because it's pretty simple. And it has some unique ingredients. So to start, we're going to talk about the most unique ingredient, which is cottage cheese. Now, I'm gonna guess this came out of a recipe from, cottage cheese is just something people always had on hand. We always had this on hand growing up. And it's probably because it was an easy side dish. You know, in the summers, we would have this with tomatoes or with sandwiches. But what I'm gonna do is I heated this just slightly in the microwave, so it's slightly warm. We're working with yeast. I'm gonna blend it just to cream it a little bit. And it's just a few pulses. And what this is doing is just breaking up some of the bigger pieces into smaller, and you can see it takes a few seconds. It's nothing big at all. Cottage cheese, what I like about it is, it has that great, to me, balance of sweet and tang. And it has, of course, some good fat in it with the milk. And it's just a great thing to add. So it's pretty much like adding a milk, but it has more heft to it. So we're gonna add this right into a bowl, and it's all gonna then be mixed in this bowl. So it's warm, cottage cheese. And when I say warm, when you're working with the yeast, you want nothing to be over 110 degrees. So if you're worried that you heat it up too much, just take the temperature of it and check. If it's over 110, you could kill the yeast and inhibit it from actually growing. Nobody wants that. So to this, what we're gonna add is some honey. Now, you know, honey and sugar in a recipe with yeast, it helps the yeast obviously kind of activate and get going quicker. But also what honey does is add one sweetness, so it kind of balances everything out. And it adds a little bit of color as you're baking it. So that's a great thing too. A Little bit of melted butter. Again, that's for flavor, texture. It's all gonna be right in there. Some of the unique things here, I said, what, what was this? Dilly bread. That's because it uses dried dill. Now, if you're not used to dried dill, let me tell you something. It's delicious. It's just as good as fresh dill. And it has that great, wonderful complexity and brightness to it. To that, I'm gonna add some of my favorite everything bagel seasoning. Now, you could use just a minced onion if you wanted to. What I like about the everything bagel is, it has the salt, it has, you know, those minced onions in it, it has all that in it with some sesame seeds, black and white sesame seeds, and I just think it's delicious. So, we're gonna add that in there. Traditionally, when mom would've made this, it would've had just minced dried onion in it. I like the everything bagel. I think it just updates it a little bit. So, I'm just gonna mix that together with the cottage cheese, I know it seems odd. It is odd. That's the best part about this recipe, but it's really delicious. We're gonna add an egg. That's the best part here. So just one egg, and this is what's great about this. All these ingredients are ones you're most likely gonna have on hand. And it just kinda takes the guesswork out of it. We just stir that around, and that's our wet ingredients. Like, how simple is that? So we're breaking up the egg slightly. We're getting it all together. Already, I wish you guys could smell the dill with that everything bagel. Guys, it's good. So the flour. We're gonna start by taking some flour. And you know when I do yeast, I do not use regular yeast. I use instant active yeast. Why? Because I think it's much more simple. Instant yeast, you don't have to bloom in water. You just have it ready to go. You can buy it just like you do your other yeast in packages. So you're gonna find it just at the normal grocery store and that's the best part. So we're gonna add our flour in. In one fell swoop, we're gonna add our yeast in because instant yeast you add with the dry ingredients. And I'm gonna add a weird, kind of an odd ingredient, but this is slightly a convergence of a quick bread and a regular bread, so a little bit of baking soda. We're gonna add that right in there, and we're just gonna start stirring. Now, you could do this with a mixer if you wanted to. I didn't feel like dirtying one up, because it's that simple. So I'm just using a fork to get this going, and then once I have it going into a nice dough, we'll let it rise. So at the end, I just do a few kneads. It comes together really quick. It's a shaggy dough. You want it to be slightly sticky and have a tackiness, but it clears the sides you can see of the bowl, and that's what's important here. So you don't have to worry about over kneading this, about working it too much. That's the beauty of this bread. It's pretty much a quick bread, but with the benefits of the yeast. So I'm just slightly, look at that, making a little ball. It's not a smooth, perfect ball. What I'm gonna do is put a little bit of oil over it, Nothing simple, like just nothing really that takes too much time. We're just doing some simple oil with no flavor. I'm gonna cover it. We're gonna let this rise. You can do it in a warm place if you want. You can leave it right here. And then we're gonna get going. This has been rising for about an hour. And what's great about this bread is we don't have to worry about it necessarily being doubled or perfectly being at a certain point. It just needs to rise. Because really what's happening during this 
it's getting a lot of flavor. So as something rises, as it kind of ferments a little bit, you're getting a lot of that flavor, but it smells so good already. So this is a double rise bread. And what we're gonna do here is just kind of knock it down. It's pretty simple, but you can see here, I'm just taking a little something and look at that, just turning it a few times on itself. Nothing perfect. We're just doing this. And what this is gonna do is create a great texture. And look, look how beautiful though this bread is. I love how simple this is. It's such a beautiful bread. And it's such a simple bread, and that's the best part. So it's well oiled because we oiled it when we wanted it to rise. Now what I'm gonna do is, so traditionally, oh yeah, and you've probably heard of these breads. Traditionally this was baked in a glass bowl, an oven safe bowl, Pyrex bowl, whatever it was. So it would have kind of an odd shape. I like to bake mine and let it do its final rise in a small Dutch oven. You know, it just looks, it's an aesthetic thing. I just like the look of it better. You can do whatever you want. What I do like to do is put some parchment paper in it. I just think it's easier then when I go to take the bread out. So I push the parchment down in. I set this little loaf here. Look at that. Look at that beauty. So I'm gonna let this go for another 30, 40 minutes. During that time, my oven's gonna preheat. So really this is just part of the preheating process. You can see this bread is a lot more hands-off. The important part is just to let it do its thing on its own and not worry about it. So I'm gonna let this go for another, like I said, 30, 40 minutes. Then we're gonna pop it in the oven. It's gonna bake beautifully and we're gonna have bread. But look at that. So the bread has been sitting here. I put the lid on just so it was like a cover, keep the moisture in to help it rise. And look at that. Now you guys, I have a little story to tell you. While we were filming this, guess what? The power went out. So this actually was punched down one time and we're gonna see if it works. I think it's going to. But this way, if your power ever happens to go out, you're gonna know what happens. It's gonna be fine. So I took the lid off. I'm just gonna pop it into the oven like this. That parchment is gonna help me get it out of here really easily. It smells amazing. You get the dill, you get that everything bagel seasoning, which you would get with just dry minced onion too. But I'm gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna let it bake. We're gonna let it be beautiful and rise. You know what we should do before we put it in the oven? What do you guys think? I think we should put a slash mark in it. I think that will just look prettier if we can take a knife and make just kind of a rough, I think I'm gonna do kind of like I would on a soda bread. I'm gonna do a, just a nice deep cut down the middle and then go crosswise. What this does is a relief cut. That way if it was going to, you know, do it on its own, you can kind of force it to do it where you want. And I think that's kind of the best part. So we're gonna just do a big relief cut. That way, as it just expands in the oven, it will be even more beautiful. So I'm gonna pop this in. I'm excited to have some fresh bread. Keep excited too. Look at it in all of its glory. So I took this out of the oven. It baked completely without the lid or anything. You can see it's nicely, deeply brown, and that's what I like. I pulled it out, you know, 10, 15 minutes ago just so it could cool off slightly because I didn't want to burn myself. But this is, look at that beautiful color all over. Now, if you're unsure about bread, if you're not used to bread, when it's a bread like this, you know what I like to do? I like to take the temperature. Then you can know it's done. I like 190 degrees in the center of a softer bread like this. So what I do now, I just enjoy it. So this is kind of a boule shaped bread. But like, let's look at this beautiful, look at that. Is that not beautiful? This is what I love. You get kind of a crust on it, but you get the soft interior. If you guys were here, you would smell this beautiful dill, but then also that everything bagel seasoning. Now it's still a little warm, but look at, like just look at this bread. Look at the texture of this bread. The color of it, that beautiful crust, I love it. So to me, I have salted butter room temperature. If you're gonna put it on bread, I feel like it needs to be salted because it has so much flavor when it's salted. It really does. So I'm just gonna put that on, let that melt into it. Look at that. <sighs> this is the best part. Mm. This is so good. I should call mom and have her come over. <laughs> she lives across the road. <laughs> what I love is, it's just one, a great bread. You could use this for sandwiches. You could use this for toast. But those little hints of herb, that dill, the everything bagel seasoning, it brings out something special. You could leave those out and have an all-purpose bread that if you wanted to do different things with, take it on the sweeter side, whatever it is. But with 
those herbs in it, it makes it a special bread. It makes it great for if you're having company over and want to have a bread on the side. If you want to make a delicious sandwich, toast this bread, make a BLT on it. Let me tell you something, it's going to be good. But even better, it's a fail-proof bread. We hardly did any work to it. We let it rise some, but it was hands-off. Hardly any kneading, hardly any work. The work was just enjoying it. So that's what's great about this bread. So what do I hope you do with it? I hope you share this recipe around so everyone can see that Bread making does not have to be complicated, does not have to be hard. If I can do this bread, this is anyone's bread and that's what's great about it. It's quick, it's easy, it's delicious. That's the point of good food. Check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe. All my other recipes, they're all on there, along with videos that you can share around. So until next time, get the recipe, make some bread, enjoy some good food. You'll make the world a better place. <laughs>